Good evening. Uh, we'll be looking in the book of James tonight. The book of James, chapter 3. New Testament, the book of James, chapter 3. And we'll begin reading in verse number 3. James, toward the end of the Bible. The book of James, chapter 3. And we'll begin reading in verse number 3. As you find your place there, I'll start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you again for the time we're going to have in your word. And Father, I pray that as we look at your word that you'll speak to us. Father, uh, forgive us where we have failed you. Father, let there be nothing in, in letting your presence be felt and your words uh, become so true to us. Father, I just pray that you'll allow us, Lord, enable us to give, us, give you our entire focus. Father, we pray that uh, you'll have your way with us tonight. We'll pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. James chapter 3, beginning in verse number 3. And it says, Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold, as the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beasts, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea, is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man rule. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing, my brethren, these things ought not so be, ought not so to be. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine fig, a vine fig? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. You know, tonight I want to talk, and, and what James is talking about here, is using our words in the right way. You know, it's real easy to use our words in the wrong way, to hurt somebody, to tear them down. But it's very important that even as Christians, we use our words to, to praise God, but also to build people up. I mean, that's what we're supposed to do. The Bible says uses the word edify, to build somebody up. And we're to edify one another. And the problem is, is that we don't, you know, we, we get our feelings hurt, we'll, we'll get upset and, and we'll start saying things before we ever think about those words that are coming out of our mouth. So as we look at the, the book of James tonight, I want to show you some things that Jane points, points out. First thing I want you to realize is that words are powerful. Words are powerful. Look at verses three through five. It says, Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. You know, James uses two examples here. The bit in a horse's mouth. You know, it's a small thing, but it has a lot of power. I mean, that with that bit, you can control that horse that is, is very much larger than the rider. But yet, when you have that bit in the mouth and you have the reins, you can control that horse. And it's powerful. And then he uses a second example, uh, the helm on a boat. You know, the, the, the rudder on a boat. You know, the boat is huge, but that little rudder can control that boat. And make it, you can make that boat go whichever way you want. And, and I think that that James bring, uses those two examples because he wants us to see that that when we picture our tongue responsible for us speaking, you know, it, it may be small, words may be small, but they hold a lot of power. They hold a lot of power. Um, you can say things that, you know, one word can lift a person up, one word can tear a person down. You know, you can be on a phone call with the person and you can just rip them up and down and, and leave that person feeling horrible or you can be on a phone call with the person and just build that person up and they can get off that phone just feeling great. You know, maybe a small thing, but words are powerful. And and as humans, I think we ought to remember that, but also more important as Christians. Here we are the children of God. We have Jesus Christ as our personal savior. We have put our faith and trust in him. 
And you know, the thing about Jesus is that he never just wasted his words. He always used his words in the right way. Because I really believe that Jesus understood that words were powerful. And they still are powerful. You can use them for mean or you can use them for good. Uh, look at verse number 5. It says, even though so, so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. You know, boasteth great things. I think the greatest thing that we can boast about is our creator, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We can boast about him all day long. If we were to, to make sure that our words were used in that fashion to, to praise our creator, to praise our Savior, what a different world this would be. How different your relationships would be. How different the, the outcome of, of conversations would be if we remember what we were created for. If we would remember who saved our souls. If we would remember who we should be acting and talking like. And it's about Jesus. So first of all, understand that words are powerful. Second thing, understand that words can be hurtful. Look at that second part of verse 5. It says, Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Verse 6, And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity, so is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. You know, James says, How great a matter a little fire kindleth. See, the thing about fire is that fire can spread quickly and do much damage. Look at the fires going on in California. Man, it started with just a little flicker. And acres and acres are burned. Homes are destroyed. People's lives are just being torn apart because of those fires. And, and James bring about, brings about the matter here that how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Words can be just like that. You know, they can create massive hurtful things. You know, if you've ever been talked down to or you've ever had mean things said about you or somebody degraded you to your face, you understand how powerful words are. And they can be very, very hurtful. Words can hurt and they can scar a person. They can ruin the testimony of a person from somebody else spreading gossip about them. Words can tear a person down. And I think that's what James wants us to realize. You know, it's very easy to in just a moment to let something come out that just is mean and mean-spirited and can hurt somebody. And we as Christians, especially we as Christians, should always make sure that we don't stoop to that level. Hey, we've been saved by the grace of God. We are new creatures. We are a new creation. We don't have to let the past drag us down. We don't have to talk the way we used to talk. We can talk differently. And we should be using our words not to hurt somebody, but to build somebody up. Third thing I want you to realize, and I think that James is trying to tell us, is that people find it hard to control their words. Look at verse 7 and 8. Verses 7 and 8, it says, For every kind of beasts, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is unruly evil, full of deadly poison. You know, James brings about the point that mankind can tame all kinds of animals. Man, if you've ever been uh, to a circus, you've ever been to uh, where they have animals and you see them control those animals because those animals are tamed, mankind can do that. You know, I saw a story the other day where they have taught cows to be potty trained. Yeah, they can teach a cow to go to a certain area and 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 to use the bathroom in that area because they've been tamed they've been taught to do that you know mankind can can tame these beasts they can tame tigers they can tame all kinds of animals elephants but yet we can't tame our own tongue we can't teach ourselves to tame ourselves to where the words that come out of our mouth are not hurtful but they're always good it says but the tongue can no man tame. It is unruly evil, full of deadly poison. And that is so true. Words can just devastate somebody else. Just like poison can hurt somebody, can kill somebody. Man, emotionally, you can be killed from words that have been spoken about you if you let it get it. And it says no man can tame. And see, when we come to the understanding that when we enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ... 
It's not us changing. It's God changing us. God living inside of us through the Holy Spirit. His Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, that's what does the changing. And we can't tame ourselves. We can't tame our words. We can't, we can't make sure that every word comes out of our mouth is right. But the very Spirit of God living inside of us. And we have to, that's why the Bible talks about yielding ourselves <clears throat> to the Holy Spirit. Yielding ourselves unto God. Because He's the one that can make the change in our life. So, first of all, realize that words are powerful. Secondly, understand that words can be hurtful. Third, understand that people find it hard to control their words. They can tame everything else, but it's hard to tame their, the, the words that are coming out of their mouth. But the fourth and last thing I want you to realize is that people use their words inconsistently. Inconsistently. Look at verse number 9 now. Still in James chapter 3, look at verse 9. It says, Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the mouth, same mouth proceedeth blessings and cursings, my brethren. These things ought not so to be. You know, James puts it here. You know, we use our words to, to praise God. Man, we sing unto Him. We talk about Him. We, we praise Him. We just thank Him for all these wonderful things. But then we'll use the same mouth to curse mankind. And James is up right here, up very straight with us. He says, um, out of the in verse 10, out of the same mouth proceedeth blessings and cursings. Then he says, My brethren, these things ought not so to be. If you're a child of God, if you're saved, if you are are, are redeemed, understand this. You ought not use your words for blessing and cursing. You ought to use your words just for praising God, for blessing. You, you should never use your words in the wrong way. And, and understand this, we can't control it, but it is God living inside of us that can. That's why we have to yield. And James tells us that we shouldn't be inconsistent. You know, God deserves for us to be consistent with our words, of praising Him, of building other people up. Then look at verse 11. It says, doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? No, oh, man, you don't you don't turn on, on a faucet and get good water one day and then turn it on the next hour or so and get salt water out of it. No, it doesn't happen that way. It, it doesn't produce both. You get one or the other. Then look at verse 12. It says, can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. See, inconsistency is not of God. Plain and simple. Inconsistency is not of God. You know, as, as a married person, when you look at your spouse, how are you using your words? Are you using your words to tear them down? Or are you using your words to build them up? As a parent with your children, are you using your words to always build them up? Or do you use your words to build them down, to tear them down? See, that's inconsistency. And God doesn't deserve for us to be inconsistent with our words. He deserves for us to be consistent with using our words for what He has deemed purpose in our lives. To use them, to praise Him, to use our words to build people up, never to tear them down. See, God deserves us to be consistent by using our words to praise Him and to build others up. You know, maybe it's time that we just stop and look at our own lives and ask ourselves, what have our words been like? Have they been the right words? Have they been good things coming out of us? Have we been praising God like He deserves? Have we been using them to, to try to teach people and to build them up? Or do we find ourselves inconsistent? I think one thing, looking at James and, and he showing us, you know, the words that come out of our mouth, that we are inconsistent. But knowing that God can do something amazing. He can be in control of our lives. He can make sure that the words come out of our mouth are for His glory. So I think the appropriate um, thing that we should, as Christians, daily, we should always think before we speak. Oh, we may be upset at times, but we should always think before we speak. When you talk to your spouse, think before you speak. When dealing with your children, think before you speak. When dealing with co-workers, think before you speak. 
You know, when especially with, with other believers, even church members, think before you speak. And if we can do that, and that brief moment that we pause and we let the very Spirit of God have control of our, of our mind, of our words, then we'll find out that outcomes will be a whole lot better. Because we will use our words and they will glorify God. They will bring praise to Him. Because that's what James is trying to get across. You know, words are powerful, so we must to, to, to kind of step back, let God have control, and make sure that our words are used the right way. To glorify God and to build others up. And if we can do that, then people will see that we truly have Christ in our lives, and it can make the difference in their lives. It can, they can see something true, something that's real in our lives, our salvation, and it will make them want Christ too. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the time we had in your word, Lord. I just pray that, Lord, you help us all to, to think before we speak and to use our words in the right way. To bring you glory, but also to build others up. And when we build others up, Lord, we know that that is bringing you glory at all times. We love you and we thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. I hope this finds you well. I hope you're doing uh, good. I hope you're healthy. Um, we are having church Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. Uh, we're kind of easing back into getting back into some things. So uh, we're careful, but at the same time, you know, we're, we're getting on with what uh, we should be as a church and what we should be doing for the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, if you need to get hold of me and Debbie, call us. Just know that we're praying for you and that we love you. Thank you.